Hello, my name is Wandir Gishiru and I am the CEO of Vivo Activewear. We are at the Cairn Country Lodge and you are watching The Other Side of Me. My first salary. Um, well, I did have a job straight after high school and I must have been 17. Um, and I worked in the accounts department at Braeburn School because my mother was teaching there, so she got me a job and I really didn't do much. I think I, I pushed paper around. And if I remember correctly, my salary was 3,000 shillings. Yeah, that was a long time ago though. Um, so yeah, so, so what did I spend it on? I probably spent it on clothes. Okay, so the first car I bought was a Honda. Um, I didn't start driving until quite late. I think I was in my late 20s when I started driving and um, at that time, the reason I got my license was because I had a job that came with a car. So I didn't have to buy my own car. And it was only after I left that job that um, I had to buy one and it was a Honda. Hmm, what moment would I relive? I don't, there's so many, but maybe, maybe a recent one. So last year, um, I, I was turning 50. So a bunch of my friends surprised me. I was going on a trip to Morocco with my mother and a friend and his mother. And 10 of my friends showed up from different parts of the world. And they had this whole itinerary. So I had made a list of things, a list of 50 things I wanted to do before I turned 50. And they went through the list and they ticked off like, six or seven of them and they made sure that we did them on that trip so one of the things was a camel ride I wanted to ride a camel and I wanted to spend the night in a desert so what did I imagine my life would be how did I envision my life when I was young uh, so I have a terrible terrible memory like I honestly I have so few memories beyond like be younger than 10 I think um, but I have a book that I wrote as a class project when I was six. I think everyone had to write a book and they had to answer certain questions. When I grow up, da, 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 and I still have that book, right? So in it, it says, um, when I grow up, I want to get married and have two children and they'll be girls. And I have two children and they're girls. So I, you know, clearly there's power in some of these things, right? And then at that point I said I would be a teacher, which I'm definitely not. What do I hope to see for the future me? Um, I, you know, I don't ever want to feel that I'm too old to look ahead. So, you know, I hope that even when I'm 80, I'll be making plans for when I'm 90. Um, I hope that I will still be surrounded by people I love and that my life will have adventure. I'll still be learning new things. Um, I'll probably take up like weight training when I'm 75 because uh, right now I can't stand it but um, yeah I just I just want to keep growing keep learning keep expanding keep having fun mm, so what are my best memories from Lion's Den um, I can tell you what my worst memories are no let me <laughs> let me start with the good ones so You know, it's an intense, the filming is fun because you're seeing all kinds of, all kinds of people doing all kinds of pictures. You've never seen them before. You don't see them until they walk into the room. So I don't know if, if, you, if you've watched the show, but that people walk down these stairs. So when they open the door to walk in, that's the first time you're seeing them. And you're like, I really wonder what this person is going to talk about. <laughs> Cause you don't know, right? And then they walk in and suddenly they're selling you an idea to sell bananas or, you know, there was a guy who came on who's a who's a um, medicine man like a witch doctor i think yeah i love the 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 extraordinary um ideas and some were very silly but some were actually pretty cool you know um and just meeting all those people i think that was for me the the, the fun part of the show all right so the the really the hard part is that every so i did this show for two seasons and each season i gained like five kilos each time <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then <laughs> because
because what happens is there's all, there's all this time in between, you know? So you film one person and then you have to wait half an hour and you, they just feed you. So initially, Vivo was primarily about dance and fitness, which is why it's called active wear. So the inspiration was really the love of, of dance um, and fitness, in particular yoga, uh, Pilates, and a few exercises that uh, my co-founder and I both were were doing. She was doing more Pilates, but we also started doing dance classes together. So we were doing salsa, hip hop, um, what else? Yeah, mostly those two, and we, we needed product. So that was the inspiration, is that we needed product that we could not find on the market. We figured we, we, we're not the only people who must be struggling to find these products. Um, so why don't we make, why don't we fill the gap and bring them, bring, bring them to Kenya? That was the initial inspiration. It has since evolved uh, to something bigger and broader. So now it's, it's more about dressing the modern African women, women in ways that truly complement, flatter, bring out the best in us. Uh, so that's the current inspiration. But like with many businesses, sometimes where you start isn't where you end up. Uh, things evolve and new opportunities will come and the market will speak to you and that will shape how, how, you, how you modify what your, what your initial plan was. Yeah. How do I unwind? Mm, I love to unwind. I, I hang out with my friends and laugh a lot. Um, wine doesn't hurt champagne's even better <laughs> um i do yoga which i love i try and do yoga three four sometimes five times a week um and i find if i do it consistently then i don't even need to unwind as much because i don't get as stressed so i i you know one of the things that i really believe works exceptionally well is meditation uh, which I've learned how to do but I haven't put it into an, enough of a practice a regular practice but it's I think by far one of the best ways to unwind um, and yeah it could be five minutes could be ten minutes some people meditate 20 minutes half an hour but even five minutes a day is very um, impactful what's my favorite music Ah, depends on the day. Um, so yeah, so right now I'm really into like Afro-Cuban sort of Latin style, uh, reggaeton kind of, that sort of music. That just, I don't, I, what, what I like about it is the beat and the fact that I don't know what the words are. So if, what happens with me with music is if, if if the words are really meaningful, then I'm focused on the world, words and I forget to sort of enjoy the music. So sometimes if it's in a different language that I don't speak, I can just enjoy the music and the beat and it always makes me want to dance. Um, yeah, I really like Afrobeat as well. I'm trying desperately to learn how to do the Guara Guara move. My biggest life lesson, that we control our thoughts or we can control our thoughts. I think for me, that changed so much of the way I saw things. Like when I realized that every thought is a story I'm telling myself, and I can choose the story, I can choose the thought, and I don't have to, I don't have to hold on to thoughts that aren't helping me, that don't make me happy. You could always choose another thought. And when I realized that, it's like, yeah, man, how many years did I waste <laughs> like being stuck, believing that this was the truth, you know? This person doesn't care about me. And that's the truth. And that was my only truth. And that was just a story. You choose your thoughts. Maybe I shouldn't say control. Like you choose your thoughts, whether it's conscious or unconscious. So when I, when I realized that and I, and I, I, I understood that if you want to, you can make a conscious effort to choose a different thought. When, you, when you're having a thought that doesn't work for you, you can choose a different one. It's not as, always as easy as, you know, um, as it may sound, but it's also not impossible. 
and I and when I you know I, I um, in between employment and starting Vivo I trained to be a life coach so it was during that process that I understood this you know um, and it's about perspective so you know you have you have a fan and I can choose to to look at it from the front and it looks one way but if I look at it from the top it's another way and if I look at it it's like you know it's the same fan but you're just choosing which perspective you're going to look at it from and if this way makes me happy and this way makes me unhappy then I'll just look at it this way and it's the same with our thoughts you know you just choose what perspective you're going to have so you know I mentioned I had a list when I was turning 50 my 50 by 50 so there are things I still haven't done on that so those I guess is my bucket list still so one is to go to Brazil. I want, I, my mother, one of my brothers and I want to go make it a family, a family trip. Um, another one, <laughs> you're gonna laugh, is to cook a meal for five friends. I've never cooked a meal for five. I've never actually cooked. I've never cooked a meal and invited people. Something else on my bucket list is to go on a silent retreat. So there are these retreats where you spend 10 days and you don't, you don't speak to anyone, you don't read a book, you don't watch TV, you don't listen to the radio, you just stay in silence, you and your thoughts and nothing else. Whose fashion sense do I admire? Michelle Obama. I think I admire her arms too, so <laughs> she looks really good in everything she wears. But I like, I like the fact that she's sophisticated and mature, but still flirty and fun. And she experiments. Um, and it's still tasteful, you know? I, I, think, I think we do have to age gracefully, but that doesn't mean we've got to like, start dressing like shoshos, you know? Like we can still, I don't know, celebrate the, 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 the way we feel and we don't necessarily always feel as old as we are, right? So when I look at the way Michelle dresses, I think um, there's a youthfulness uh, to it and yeah, she looks good. So I've lived in about six countries and every, every single one has something special about it. Um, even the ones I didn't enjoy as much as the others, but there's still something that was really special. But if I had to pick one other than Kenya, because Kenya's for sure like my favorite place in the world, um, it would be a city and it would be New York. And I think what I love about New York is just the fact that it is so full of energy. Like you literally, you get off the plane and you're, you're, you feel it, you know? And it's just, it's, it's a city where anything seems possible. Like anyone can become anything, everyone fits in, um, nobody, nobody really cares, you can dress how you want, you can, you know, you meet someone in a cab and he's like, he's driving a cab but he's acting at night and, you know, he's got a business on the side and he's feeling good and everything's gonna work out. So what am I, what am I most grateful for? Um, I think, yeah, for sure, my family. Um, and not just because they're my family, but because they, my, my parents, probably by accident, not necessarily by design, but they raised us in such a free way um, that I, I had no... I didn't have to unlearn anything to learn who I was. So I didn't, you know, I meet people who are like, oh my God, I could never do that. I've been raised my whole life being told you should never, ever, 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 ever do this. And I'm like, wow, what, is, what was I told never to do? Uh, what else am I grateful for? I'm grateful for my kids for sure, because they keep me, they keep, they, they, <laughs> they keep it real for me, you know? Um, they, they sort of bring, they bring back what really matters because no matter how bad the day was or how, whatever thoughts you allow to come into your head, you know, you come home and your, your kids, something's happening with them and nothing else matters.
you know uh, so I'm very very grateful um, and what else am I grateful for I'm grateful for my friends because I did you know I grew up in a family of, of boys I only had brothers and <coughs> And I wasn't a tomboy, so I couldn't really play with them. Like I wasn't climbing trees and catching tadpoles or whatever they used to do. So I, I needed people to like, you know, do girly things with. And so I gravitated to my friends. And some of those friends are still my closest friends. I mean, 40, 40 something years later, I'm still very close to them. And, and we've, we've kind of gotten to a point in life where be raw, be real, say exactly what's going on with you, um, hold each other up, cry together if you need to, get drunk t together if you need to, laugh if you need, you know, whatever it is. Like, I think, I think it's a space where, um, you know, we can be completely authentic and not have to keep up appearances, not have to worry about being judged. Um, and yeah, there are many times in my life where I'm like, man, if I didn't have friends, I'm not sure how to how to make that through. Um, so I'm really grateful for that. So thanks for watching the other side of me. Bye bye. together in this thing and we, uh, we're together all right. <laughs> you all look at me okay, we're looking down now. <laughs> so thanks for watching the other side of me hope you've enjoyed it Guara guara, like while I while I while I think about it, huh? <laughs> You're looking at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> All right, so you're gonna cut that out, right? <laughs>